to, but but you all got in, you all got seats and everything else. MegaCon 2023, how are you? Okay, we are gonna start in just one second. Um, okay, everybody, you can kind of everybody. Everybody needs to see you can see you. Yes. Alright, great. Alright, sounds good. Uh just give me one second and I think we're gonna start this off. I'll give you food. Alright, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> So bad. 
I got a few offers too. How can I say it? I'll let you say it. Uh, I, I'm flying out tomorrow night. I, you're absolutely right. I got work during the week I could, that I couldn't get out of. So one of these days, one of these days, you'll get a, a videos of me going ah, on the space mountain. <laughs> Why are the lights on? You can see all the spit in the walls. <laughs> I'm serious. No, the I'm lighters. serious. On. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, so, yeah, I was saying this before. Uh, we've done this dance plenty of times, but we haven't done a one on one. So, I can finally ask you your origin story into voice acting. Sure. Um, this is a complicated tale, but um, I started out doing musical theater. A um, few productions here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's like the, one of the best places you can start to be a voice actor because it trains your throat and it also trains you to like, um, when you're just in the booth alone, uh, it trains you to, um, you, you know, be able to emulate uh, acting. Anyway, uh, around the same time, I was uh, experimenting with animation. Um, and uh, you guys know the early internet, Newgrounds and all that. They can be cruel, and I was 12, so <laughs> animation did not last long. Um, but the group of friends that I made animating did. Um, I started to voice act for their stuff on, on their request. Well, sometimes I was pushy, but I like I like to work back then. I like to work now. Um, but uh, I was like, wow, I can do this for a living? Cool. Uh, so I pursued that um, as much as I could at 16. Uh, my dad, the lawyer that he is, uh, negotiated me in, as the uh, first minor to ever take Bob Bergen's animation class, uh, the uh, voice actor of Porky Pig. And uh, that, it, it sort of, I, I've had so many teachers since then, Richard Horvitz, Charlie Adler, you were uh, Debbie too, right? What's that? You were Debbie? Yeah, Debbie Derryberry. She was an early one. Um, she, was, she was very proud of you. Wait, is she? she? Oh, no, she, yeah, she was. Who was? <laughs> I know. <yeah. laughs> I was just a little baby in that, too. There are pictures of that floating around, me, me being a, a little baby in there. Um, but yeah, it, it, uh, it was just trial and error, getting rejected over and over and over again, um, until I finally booked Fantastic Betty. Uh, that was the first big role I had, and uh, it sort of uh, gained momentum from there. And um, and you guys started following me on Twitter, um, and uh, I, I I was like, oh, I gotta get my socials cleaned up real quick. Um, so uh, yeah, more or less, that's the story. And uh, again. You hit the ground running. Uh, Freddy's kind of leveled you up, though, right? Yes, yes, absolutely so. He has been a driving force in my career for as long as I've had one, and I'm very grateful to have been uh, multiple iterations of Freddy, yes, including Glamrock Freddy Kaysen <laughs> and Funtime Freddy, yes. Um, but, and, and of course, Sun and Moon, uh, and uh, no, I guess that's it, unless you count entered for Molten Freddy, but that gets messy, right? Nightmare, baby! <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, you've done some really good body of work. Like I said, I threw some of the other stuff in there, too. But uh, I would be remiss, I guess, we have to talk a little bit about uh, when when your life got overhauled. Yeah. <laughs> See what I did there? So, with Fun Time Freddy came conventions. Uh, I got picked up for SAC Anime. That was my first one in Sacramento, California. And from there, uh, there was this uh, lovely con that came next called Anime Week in Atlanta, if anyone has ever been to that. Nope. Okay. Um, <laughs> and on there, I got to be on a panel with um, now Jesse James Greeley, uh, who plays Tokoyami in uh, My Hero. Um, Josh Petersdorf, who plays Roadhog in Overwatch. Josh! Joshy boy! Florida's <laughs> his turf, man. I'm surprised he's not here. He, he's usually here with a, with a towel around him, like, Yeah, where's the wrestling ring? I gotta get some frustrations I, out. I, I did not recognize him and always shaved his beard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this dude staring at me? Patty! Like, Josh! 
When I worked at uh, Universal Studios, I did uh, the voices of Optimus and Megatron there, and he was also, at the time, uh, Optimus and Megatron, and he showed up one day, and I was like, Josh, <coughs> I, Josh you look different. Uh, and, no, he, he, uh, he immediately grew it back, but that was for a uh, facial capture job. He had to stick the beads on his face. Um, what was I? Oh, right. So, Anime Week in so Atlanta. Not, uh, plus Ultra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the last person on the most, uh, ar arguably important to the overhaul story was Colleen Clickenbeard was on that panel. Um, now Colleen Carroll, uh, who plays uh, Momo and is the voice director of My Hero Academia. And, and I, that's why she's the queen. That is, she is the queen in every way. She, she holds herself very regally and she has a great manner about her. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I guess I, I made some kind of an impression because uh, a year later I would get the uh, sides for overhaul, audition sides, so it's like a script, uh, overhaul and uh, Sun Eater, um, and, uh, Tomaki. And uh, <laughs> when I got these, I had just come back from Dragon Con, which uh, for those who don't know is a party convention. Now, back then, we weren't as careful about uh, stuff, so I came back with bronchitis, uh, and which was like, yeah, a, a pit in my stomach when I, when I got these sides. It's like, can I do this? <laughs> I sounded just like that. And it took six hours, but I got five, five lines on the script that were usable. Um, and I sent that off. And she came back to me and said, the voice that you use for Sun Eater, can you do a callback but use that voice for overhaul? Because it was raspy enough on its own. So I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, and I did it. And that's the overhaul you hear today. I, 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 <laughs> you can ask Bill Butts. I was uh, his roommate at the time. I was jumping around the house when I found that out. Oh, well, get Give it a little bit more overhaul, you know, I think. You're all sick. <laughs> well, before I take it over, uh, hand it over to the audience, I just want to say, man, um, it, first of all, it's a great pleasure to have you here, and it's been a great pleasure to just to see your career grow over the past couple of years. Man. Thank it's you. It's really been knocked out of the park, and I'm so excited to see where we got up and up on the horizon. And um, just thank you, man. Yeah, you've known me since before fun, or since before uh, overhaul when I was just fun time Freddy. Yeah. I did Florida Supercon 2017 in Fort Lauderdale, and that's where we first that's met. Right, you did the very first uh, Steel Netflix. Yeah, with uh, Zach Callison and the Ruby people. Yeah, they were fun. That was a fun. It's online. Uh, check it out now. So, all right. With that being said, we're going to open up to your questions. Let's start the line right here. The first question gets two pieces of candy. And please remember the rules. <laughs> candy thing. I love it. Uh, hi. What's your name? Uh, Marlo. Hi, Marlo. What do you want to know? Um. So, um, I'm guessing you're aware of what the Gregory Vent meme that went viral a, a few months back. Yes, I'm aware. And <laughs> I was wondering about that um, now that it went viral. <laughs> so the one that went viral actually wasn't me. It's because it went viral that it caught my attention because you guys kept tagging me and then I'm like, oh, this is funny. And I was like, Scott, they've been good, boys and girls and others. Can, can you please let me do this for Christmas present? He's like, okay, one time. <laughs> so I did the... Um, uh, what was it? Uh, Gregory, do you see that small vent on the floor? <laughs> you need to be sus. <laughs> yeah, or, or whatever it was. I, I, I didn't memorize it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it, TikTok has made so many things viral so quick. I'm very grateful for it. We did, it was very hard to go viral back in the days when it was just YouTube, you know? So I love TikTok. That's my answer. Thank you. I love TikTok. All right. What is your name? My name is Chloe. Okay, this is Chloe. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. Hi. How are you? So I have a question. So, how long have you been doing the voice for Freddy? So, since you've been doing that voice, I'm just curious. 
since I can't hear, I'm deaf. I noticed, you know, your character in all the uh, games that you, in all the games and everything. And I know that uh, with all the the sound that you do, like how do you make your voice scary? Since I can't hear it, how do you make your voice scary for the uh, for Freddie? Like when you talk normally versus when you talk scary, what's what's the transition between normal and scary? For sure. Um, to answer uh, the first part, I've been Freddie for about seven years now. Don't I feel old? Um, <laughs> Seven, yeah, 2023, seven years. Um, and making the voice scary, there are many different nuances to it. It's not always just the gravelly voice and screaming. Um, it, it's not always that. There's many different ways to be scary, and usually the scariest stuff is the most quiet stuff because it's unsettling. Everybody's now uncomfortable, right? <laughs> it, manipulating that in certain ways is uh, just manipulating uh, what makes people afraid. And it, all the things that you try not to do in, in real life, you, you sort of uh, make that your instrument um, so that people will be scared by you. Now, at cons, I try not to be scary, <laughs> and I hope I've succeeded in that. Of course. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't uh, like to be scary as a person, um, but uh, yeah, when, when I play characters, it's, it's really fun. <laughs> Thank you, of course. Thank you. Thank you.
my first thingies there. And I would just buy VHSs. Does anyone know what that is? Yeah. Okay, thank goodness. We're still in the right... Uh, watch when we get to generation like A, B, or A, C, and they're like, what's that? Is that like when it's like static? Um, I remember when VHSs were brand new. Remember, uh, remember tape cassettes? I, yes, I had tape I remember 8-tracks. 8-tracks, baby, heck yeah. Anyway, sorry. Um, so, getting to be a Pokemon, part of that anime that's still running when I'm, what, 28, 27? I was 27 when I recorded it, but 28 now. That's crazy, man. I, I told my freaking grandma about it because she used to get me these VHSs for like Christmas and my birthday and like and like the little toys that uh, like the little Pokemon figurines that would come in the spring loaded Pokeballs. If anyone knows about those, my mom used to bribe me with those to take uh, inoculations. <laughs> um, and you said be a big boy now, um, and, and you get the Bulbasaur and. I, um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it was like one of the most special point, moments in my career to originate a voice for a Pokemon, an official Pokemon, and uh, I'm so grateful to Lisa Ortiz for giving me the chance to do that. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Um, my name is Bela, and my question is, between the animatronics Sundrop and Moondrop, who do you prefer and why? I love both my babies. <laughs> Make me choose a child. <laughs> well, can I say me? Can I say both? <laughs> uh, yes, so yeah. Cause son is like. He's a good boy. He just wants, you know, you to be safe and, and you to have your glitter glue and your googly eyes. And, and Moon is just like. I don't know, he sounds cool. Uh, <laughs> um, do I have to choose one, Rune? Do I have to choose one, or can I say both? All right. Uh, you, you may pass or play. Uh, I'm going to invoke my moderator card. See, you may be a moderator. I'm sorry. I love my babies. <laughs> All right. Sorry. He loves them both equally. Is that fair? Is that fine? Thank you. Hey, what's your name? Hey, I'm Barry. It's an honor to meet you. Hi, Barry. So my question is, have you heard of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative? Yes. Yes. And yeah. if so, are there any projects you're excited for? I mean, Pop Goes is part of it, right? Yes. I'm, I'm really excited for that. I, I love Pop Goes. Um, I'm excited for FNAF Plus. Is that what that, that's called? Yeah. I'm really stoked to see what they do with that. How can you make... FNAF more at this point, and it, it boggles my mind, but I'm sure they'll find a way. The, those are the two that come to mind. And that, hey. that's, yeah, I'm sorry, that's huge, right? That any creator lets the fan base create canon? That is incredible. I haven't seen that since Transformers with, with the Vodcon stuff. That, so props to Scott for that. Props to Scott. He loves you. Guys. He really does. Hey, what's your name? My name is Lucas, and how old is Gregory? How old is who? Gregory. Gregory? Not sure. I wish I knew. I, I, he's young enough for me to have to protect, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lucas, great question. I wish I knew inside of lore, but Scott tells me nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Yeah. Hey, what's your name? just a straight up audition. Um, they were sending it out and they weren't really sure what they wanted if memory serves me correctly. Um, they just wanted something demon-esque and, and they showed the, the uh, concept art for the Fiddlesticks rework and everything. So I tried a few things. Um, I don't even think there was a script. I think they just said, just make sounds for like 10 seconds. And, and, and we'll call, we'll cattle call you guys into a callback. So I just went like, 
you know, they kind of heard something for like 10 seconds, and they're like, yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I did a call back for it, um, where I, uh, oh man, they, the, if you guys could see the faces behind that glass, that, that is the most sure look of disgust I have ever seen. <laughs> disgust and horror. And that's just what I wanted. So that's what both me at, uh, I believe. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Hi, Quinn. And I go uh, so My uh, question is, so what character in the future, like, let's say just you could voice any character you wanted, what character would you be the most excited to voice ever? Like if someone was like, hey, we're gonna do a reboot of this old series or something. See, that's tough because the moment it comes out of my mouth, it, I seem to jinx it. I, I wanted one and I talked about it, and then that didn't happen. Um, but if we're talking just like fantasy, like I, I would love if Bo 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 had a reboot. I would love to play uh, Don Patch or Bob Ross and Matt, the little orange guy. Hey, what's your name? Hi, I'm Hayden. Hi, Hayden. Sorry. Um, I want to ask, what are your thoughts on the convoluted FNAF timeline? <laughs> I think that MacPat's doing his best. <laughs> and I think you guys should cut him some slack, because nobody else has I, I've been in his house. He has a beautiful mind board. He has a room just for that. Nobody else is putting in that kind of, well, a few people are, like, uh, like, uh, Oh, who's the guy who, is it Johnny Blocks who did the, or, or is it um, FUNAF, yeah. F-U-H-N-A-F-F. -F. Um, they, they did a great theory. Um, yeah, I, I know it's garbled, I think that's by design, and I'm kinda amazed that he's kept the mystery this long. At the feeling of the mystery. I think that's what still keeps us together to this day, right? That there's some intrigue still, that we don't know exactly what happened. So I kind of like it being a garble mess, honestly. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Kaji. Um, correct me if the internet is wrong, but you. The internet is never wrong. <laughs> yeah. Supposedly, you voiced the bloaters in the second Last of Us game. That I did. So, can you tell us anything about your experience working on The Last of Us? That was so much fun. Um, there's actually video of that session online. That never happens. Um, but it's on my TikTok, at Kellen Goff. Uh, <laughs> um, they, they do this thing that Sony does, uh, where they have, instead of the mic in front of you, they put a, this weird beanie on you that has two tiny lavalier mics hanging off of it so that you can move around and and like you know not be uh, be holding to where the mic is you know um so there was a lot of movement in that session i took full advantage they gave me a beta video um, that I sort, they played all of the animations for the bloater. We would, when it was walking around, I would, I would copy, you know, I, I would do in real time, uh, vocal-wise, what he was doing on screen. So it was, he was like hobbling, I'd be like, <laughs> and if he was screaming, I'd be like, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. Uh, that was so much fun, and they were so careful with my throat, and I really love working with Naughty Dog. I love those guys. Thank you. Hey, what's your name? I'm Nick. I'm very curious. Out of all the Freddies in the FNAF universe, which one do you think is superior? Mm. Oh. Superior in what way? <laughs> we'll go with design. Design? Okay. Well. Spaghetti Freddy has the most articulation. <laughs> Glamrock is, uh, uh, I, I feel like he's the most advanced, right? I, I, I feel like he would be. Uh, Funtime Freddy, I love that the face of it, it's, I, I, I hate keeping on giving these nothing answers. Um, but, uh, I think, 
I, I think I like Molten Freddy, because you can do a lot with tendrils, you know? That you can't do with a human body, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Oh, hi, my name is Hannah. Um, so, out of, I know you said their worst, uh, your least favorite, what's your most favorite of uh, FNAF uh, animatronic? Most favorite? Yeah. That I didn't voice? Yeah. That I did, oh, any? Oh, well, I can't say one my voice because then I'm choosing my children. I like Mangle. I like that design. <laughs> I love the garbled messes. They're so different and not humanoid, and I like it. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Hi, my name's Xavier. I just wanted to know, um, out of all the characters you've played up until this point, which one do you wish had the most recognition? Like, which one got the most recognition that you think, like, went under the radar? Ooh. Um, well, there's one out right now, uh, called Wingman, uh, for Valorant, um, that, that I, people don't know, I, I voiced Wingman, and that, that went under the radar, so that, that sort of is part of it, but if we're talking a series that doesn't have a following, um, uh, there's this great anime called Welcome to Demon School. And, oh, good, good. It has some recognition. That's good. Um, uh, I loved playing General Fur Fur in that, and I loved playing the school bell. Oh, and there's this series on Netflix called Romantic Killer, and I... Oh, you guys like it? Okay, I get to play... I play the blonde tsundere in that. So I, that's the only time I've ever gotten to play a tsundere, like a real, genuine one. So that I, I would like more people to watch that, yeah. And Sasaki and Vino, of course. Yeah! <laughs> but that gets major recognition already. Oh, yeah. cool. It needs more, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Hey, what's your name? Uh, Becky. Um, what is your favorite uh, Five Nights at Freddy's fan game that has ever been created? Say pop goes. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm. I, I think it's going to be FNAF Plus. I, I, I like the idea of all the features that are uh, that are going to be out for that. Short answer on that one. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Katie. Um, have you ever been on multiple projects at once? And if so, how do you balance all of that? Constantly, I'm on multiple projects now. Um, there, there are some projects that are done with one session. There are some that take uh, years and years and years and years and years and years to, to finish. Um, and balancing that, I, I mean, I would be nowhere without my agents. The kind folks at Atlas Talent uh, keep my calendar in check uh, very well. Um, but just the the you know, the anxiety of like switching from thing to thing. I tend to take full vocal rest days. I'll say, okay, nothing on Monday and just not talk for the day and just like meditate or something and that resets me. Thank you. Hey, what's your name? Oh, yeah. Well, my name is Jacob. Nice to meet you. Nice oh. to meet you. Oh. Oh. Uh, actually, You're my... very goofy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just wondering, uh, if by any means necessary, like, are you like involved? I know it's been like multiple times now. Have you been involved with the Finance of Freddy movie? Yeah, that's one of the things we we can't talk about. I'm sorry. It's another horizon, and you know, you can neither confirm nor deny that. Yeah. And uh, remember, they're watching. Yeah. <laughs> but I did just get a selfie with Matt Lillard down there. That was cool. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> I hope we get to that. Then. All right, there. That's it. Very much. There. Thank you. All right. Thank you.
Who would be your favorite animatronic? Favorite animatronic from Security Breach? Um, I really like Monty. I really love that design. <laughs> Yeah, I agree, and I like green and purple, so afraid of the ball. Hey, what's your name? Nicholas. So, I know you voice act some of the characters in the Spooky Month series. What's yeah. it like working on those? Oh my gosh, that's so much fun. Um, most of the time I'm just recording the lines and sending them off to save your pedo. Um, but, uh... He always tends to pick the first take I do. I'll do like seven takes of a line, and he's like, yeah, that one's good. Um, so I, I tend to put my favorite takes at the front. Um, but being Roy for so long, that's so much fun. Hey, loser. <laughs> JK. Thank you. Hey, what's your name? Uh, I'm Cooper, and you have done interviews with Matt Pat and Doc Owen. I have. Probably, and probably some more. Uh, what was it like uh, being on an interview like that, being asked a bunch of questions? Because I know you were... Kind of like this. Anxious. I knew that it was going to go to a bunch of people, so you're always scared about, oh, am I saying the right thing? Is, is what I say now going to come back to bite me later? Um, that, that's always rushing through your head, but, uh, I end up really just having fun with them, just talking as humans, uh, we, we just end up chilling, and, and that's when it gets comfortable, when we can just turn off the, okay, manners, it's, a it, it's time for the interview thing, and just be people. Hey, what's your name? Zachary. Hi, Zachary. Hey! Decode of other people or yourself? Just by myself. Um, for video games, it's much easier to have everybody record individually so that they can take the files and move them around because we could be talking over each other when we're all together. Plus, it's hard to... Uh, schedule it so that everybody is free at the same time but when I do get to record together with other people it is so much fun but unfortunately that seems to be happening less and less in our industry so I hope it stays alive in one way or another there you go thank you thank you buddy hey what's your name hi my name is Amethyst I am at this. And I had a question. With voicing so many characters, I was really curious. Would you say that it's easier to change into characters right away, or do you think it takes you a little more time to gradually get into a character? It depends on how much how much there is to the character. Because some characters are literally one line and then they're gone. And those are easy to switch from one to the other. Um, but when it's someone who has that rich back history and that would affect a way that they said a certain thing to somebody, then it turns into more of a, a loading bar, absolutely, in my head. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, for, like for characters like uh, Overhaul, you know, where, where he's had all this stuff, when I came back for uh, season six, I, I had to work a little bit to get back into that. I had to listen to a lot of MCR. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, so it depends from character to character. Thank you, Amethyst. Hey, what's your name? Well, hello, my name is Dave. I wanted to ask... Pokemon, like, uh, 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 Violet and uh, yeah. Scarlet. Yeah, Arvin, right? <laughs> so, back in the day, like I want to say like three years ago or so, you made a you made a YouTube video about how you voice fiddlesticks and such, teaching your voices and such. Mm -hmm. Is there any recommendations you would say now for any potential voice actors if you wanted to change what you said? You mean for doing the voice of fiddlesticks? No, or in general? Uh, no, I think I think my opinions have stayed the same. Um, it's about making a character and not doing a funny voice. Um, if you're just starting at doing a voice, then there's nothing behind it. It's like uh, you you're just eating frosting when you want to eat a cake, right? 
So you gotta bake more character points into it first. Um, I'd say that's the biggest hurdle I had when I was a kid getting over. I too thought that uh, funny voices, or I, I guess people are calling them impressions now, um, that I thought that was the way to do it, but it really is creating a character, and that character just happens to have a wacky voice because of who they are, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, what's your name? Hello, I'm Sean, and I was wondering, uh, I was wondering the story of how you got contacted by a Chicken Nugget and how you came up with like, the voice for Bezel. So, people who don't be, does anybody know the series Chicken Nugget in here on TikTok? Okay, good, we got a few. Um, I contacted them. <laughs> I, my friends uh, Christina V and Don Bennett were on it, and I was like, huh, I wonder if I could. Because when I see a project I really like, I, I want to, you know, reach out and say, hey, if you're ever holding auditions for it, I'd, I'd love to try out. And, and more often than not, they, they respond with, uh, respond like amicably, like either, oh no, we're not, or oh yes, I'll keep you in mind. I'll, it, usually it's, I'll absolutely keep you in mind. So I reached out to, um, to Kira, uh, I, I can't pronounce her last name, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, she said at the moment there wasn't anything I could fit, but in the future there there was absolutely something coming. And her, it was her idea the, of, of Bezel, of course, the, the uh, wacky uh, tumbler sexy man with a clock face. Um, uh, and uh, she, she called him Mr. Time at first, but that was a placeholder name. And I said, well, I used to make, uh, I, I, I used to help my grandpa um, fix watches. And uh, the, the thing on a watch that circles the, um, the glass is called a bezel. And this one has a rotating bezel, as you can see. Um, and I, so I recommended that, and she's like, I love that. Um, so yeah, she reached uh, back out to me and said, hey, would you like to do this? And I absolutely accepted. Um, and I'm really, really happy to be part of that cast. Thank you. It's such a wholesome show. You guys should watch it. It's on TikTok. Yeah. Hey, what's your name? Yo, uh, I'm Zia. And I found you a couple of years ago based off of Diablo. Uh, but what was the whole experience for you, like doing Diablo and everything? Diablo. OK, so that was, I didn't expect to book that one because the because uh, Katsuki, the, the um, the, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I'm so sorry if I'm not, the, the Seiyu, um, the Japanese voice actor, he, his is so, so smooth and suave, and, and I'm like, but I'm a raspy boy. Um, so I, I, you know, I did my best takes with it, and I think it was the hype of overhaul at the time, but it was just like, let's have him play another Mafia boss, why not? Um, but I was, I was very stunned and grateful to get that. And we recorded in studio for a good bit, and then COVID happened. <laughs> so we uh, all scrambled to get our sound booths in our houses sounding, uh, sounding you know, TV ready, because this was going to be on Toonami. Didn't want it to sound like a, a closet or whatever, um, or a, a bad closet anyway. Um, so I, I actually recorded the fight with uh, um, uh, white, white hair, red eyes, um, in the fight where he took the iron out of the blood. Risotto. Um, I, I actually did recorded that fight with Risotto in Armin Taylor, his voice actor's booth. He was kind enough to let me record that until my booth came. And then from there, it was just me screaming in my pajamas, as opposed to real real boy clothes. Um, but yeah, that was that took some recovery. I, I will say now, some vocal recovery. I, I I just knew that you know JoJo fans are sometimes sometimes a little picky on the voices, and I just wanted to do it justice so that so that people would have a hard time. Least, you know? <laughs> Thank you. All right, time for one more final question. What's your name? Uh, my name is Anne. My, my question was, 
Who's your favorite um, voice acting project? And also, I love the way they do the, the monster. The uh, thank you. Yeah. No, <laughs> I like the way you did it. Um, see, it, my favorite voice acting project, that's it, impossible to pick because I've done like hundreds and they've all been so kind to me. Well, most of them. Is it fair uh, to say one of your favorites? One of my favorites to work on. Absolutely, it was Sasaki in Vietnam, uh, 100%, because Emily Fajardo, the director, let me get away with almost anything. As she said, or they said, as long as you fit the flaps, I don't care, be funny. And I got to do so many things that anime voice actors don't usually do. And I think that's part of the reason that people uh, like the dub so much is because Emily gave all the voice actors that freedom, that, that big freedom to do whatever they wanted. I rewrote so many lines <laughs> just, just to make um, like colloquialisms. Like, uh, like I, I think there was one line where like, um, Oh geez, uh, where where I was insulting uh, Kurosawa uh, because he's the Millhouse of the series, um, and he has a blue streak in his hair. So I called him Blue Streak uh, because Jonas Scott, the voice actor, loves Sonic. <laughs> they let me get away with so much. So that's one of the projects I will never forget working on, and I hope gets a season two so we can do it again. Immediate target and anything coming up that you're allowed to share with us. Absolutely, positively. So, I am going to be in a little video game coming up called uh, Minecraft Legends. I believe. I'm going to be. Uh, I can't say specifics yet, but I am going to be Piglins and that that kind of thing. Um, and what's that? Hooray! <laughs> and I think that's all I'm allowed to talk about for now. I'm sorry. Um, it's all good. He'll be back to see you in just a little bit. In the meantime, this was Kellen Goff, and that was our time. Thank you guys. Can I take a selfie with you all? Thank you. Thank you. We got time because I'm adjusting. This.